Hey guys, it's uh, me for a new video. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just here to answer. I'm excited to be here uh, to answer some of the questions. It's almost 1 a.m., but I decided to take a study break from anatomy and hopefully address some of the most, some of the most, um, I guess, uh, questions addressed towards me that I feel is very universal. So I had a lot of people um, ask me these questions either on my social media, email, or a different type of networking have contacted me and asked me for these type of, uh, these ha this have asked me for these questions, um, and I'm here to address some of them. Um, so the ones that I get are the two main questions, or at least motivation, like how do you stay motivated, um, I study regimen for certain courses, and they ask me how I'm doing. So the two most important ones being motivation and study, and then I'm going to let you know some of my, what I've been up to. <clears throat> so for, uh, for motivation, people always ask me, you know, what keeps you motivated? And, you know, what I like to tell people first off is that I get unmotivated just like you guys. Some days I can't get out of bed and I'm sleep I sleep all day. On the weekends, my productivity goes down. So I'm in the same boat, you guys. Some, some as you guys, some days I don't feel like studying. Some days I'm in the zone, some days I'm not. Uh, but what keeps me motivated close to exams, um, and I continue to study for you know eight, twelve hours a day, is the fact my is is my motivation, my drive. And I tell people that everyone's motivation is different. You just have to find it within yourselves or some 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 experience in your life. My motivation for me is my mom. Um, my mom. I mean, I I see what she goes through, and I realize that in in perspective to hers, I am I have I shouldn't be complaining. Um, and this is why she currently lives with my little brother and sister in in a room. She's renting a room from someone's house because um, she can't afford her own place. And she's living there, and she's working these shitty factory jobs. You know, having to work, go to work at four a.m. and very strenuous jobs as cleaning the grounds and, and just like janitorial sort of work and and just horrible and she comes home sometimes or I see her when I when she visits and she'll have cuts and scrapes and she's like oh don't worry she always tells me that you know they you know, I'm like you know what's going on working at 4 a.m. and so forth she's like oh they just you know they they appreciate how much I work so you know they like me working so that's why they come you know make me come in at 4 a.m. and she has to stay optimistic about it because of the way otherwise she wouldn't make it she would she would crack um, so I see the way she looks at things and the struggle she's going through in her early 50s. And then I think about myself that I'm sitting here reading a book, memorizing things in, in a room, and I have food in the refrigerator, you know, and so forth. And, like, what do, I ha what do I have to complain about, you know? And so that's my motivation is seeing my mom's struggles and, and knowing that I want to help her in the future, you know, knowing that I want to through education hopefully one day be able to help my mom out you know so she doesn't have to struggle like this as she gets older um and you know that's that's my motivation so when i'm sitting here right now like at 1 a.m and as i continue to study um i have that in the back of my mind constantly when i feel tired i said i think about my mom she's waking up at 4 a.m to go scrape up shit and and to just and just have a horrible you know work schedule and so forth and that's my drive that's my motivation and you guys i know you guys all have something like that and and I know you guys need to use that to your advantage because that's how I stay motivated. Um, next thing is a lot of people always ask me, how do you study, you know, or how do you study for science courses? And the, the answer to that is that every single class that I've taken, I've studied differently. Every, even from organic chemistry 1 to organic, organic chemistry 2 to 3, because I'm in a quarter system, I've studied differently. If the teacher is all about the book, then I study the book. I read the book 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times until I get it. If I don't get it the 7th time, I go the 8th time. And I just keep going and going until I make sure I understand every single thing. And if I can't understand something, I'll, I'll Google it on the internet. There's videos. There's online resources. There are people out there. You know, just make sure you know the material. It's that's how you study for an exam. If the if if it's off the book, if it's a lecture, I like to audio record my lectures and I re-listen to it three four times. I take notes of my notes and then I take notes of those notes again and I re-listen to the audio recording and I try to like try to like even answer the, the or save the sentences before she even says them because I've listened to them that many times and I make sure I understand every single word she says like my biochemistry teacher um, so I do that for that class uh, for um, so everything needs to be adjusted to your teacher look for old exams um, look at PowerPoint um, look at the book look at different resources and see what she's looking for if it's more textbook do more textbooks if it's her lecture then record the lecture and audio recording and re-listen to that three four six seven times until you understand every single word that she says in class 
Um, so every single class is differently, and I approach every class different. Um, and so that's the way it is. And one thing too is, please people stop doing. Uh, one thing I advise against is study groups. I like to do what I want to present to the whole pre-med world is review groups. Um, review groups is a thing that I've established. All my friends that we've we've been doing this, we've been doing this for four years now. All my friends are now in PhD schools, dentistry schools, optometry schools, MD schools, PA schools. We have successfully uh, found a way to do this. Um, and this is by review groups. We make sure that we all study on our own and maybe four days before an exam, we come together and we've, we've all studied it, all the materials. Even if we didn't understand it, we maybe under, like maybe one page we didn't understand, but we kept going through it, but we at least seen it, right? So we get to the class, uh, to our group, we do a review, we go, if it's a class that's all textbook related, that everything's gonna come out of textbooks, we go, we go literally set, I mean, word for word, sentence for sentence, uh, paragraph for paragraph, page by page, and we freaking break everything down till the whole group understands it, uh, and we're doing a review because we've all seen it once. So we do review groups, never study groups, because this is our future. We don't have time for laggers, and you know, if you're not caught up with it, then you know, we don't want to be, sl you know, slacking off and 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 talking all the time and going on side conversation and so forth. We try to stay stick strictly on on reviewing the material. So we do review groups. Um, also, too, I wanted to tell people. Uh, you know, people always ask me, Edgar, how do you get all these, this is another question I forgot to say this, they always ask me, Edgar, how do you know all these surgeons, how do you do all these sh shadowing rotations, how do you do this, and to be honest with you, the way I've gotten to know all of them, because all my families are janitors, we're from Mexico, we don't, I don't have anything in my family, anyone that's even come close to even being even a nurse, um, is through summer programs, uh, all my, all my shadowing that I do for surgery and so forth is because I've known these surgeons from the summer programs, from, uh, I've been at UCR School of Medicine, I'm also affiliated with UCLA School of Medicine now. I'm affiliated with Western, uh, a private school, medical school here in California, just because I Googled. So people go out there, don't be afraid of Google and Google summer programs, especially right now, the applications for summer programs are starting between December till March. So make sure you go online and you just Google summer programs. And if you live in Ohio, look at summer, um, summer medical school programs at Ohio, Ohio State. Or if you want to go out of state, Google California, come out to California. Um, you know, also a really good programs are called SMDEP. So uh, S as in summer, M as in mother, D as in um, dirt, E as in my name, Edgar, and P as in Pablo or something. You know, look, Google that up, SMDEP summer programs. And... Um, they're great summer programs. I met actually this cool guy named Sean, all the way from Virginia, that did a summer program at UCLA. I, went, I was at UCLA, one of my programs at UCLA, and he recognized me from YouTube here. He's like, oh, dude, I'm from Virginia. I'm in this SMDEP program here at UCLA. And I was like, wow. And he got to know all these doctors and, and physicians at UCLA, and now he has those connections here at California. So just by simply Googling something, you could find all the surgery rotations, all the clinical rotations, everything that you need to find just by Googling. And summer programs are the best way. I wish I would have done summer programs since my freshman year, to be honest with you. I've only done them for two years now. So at the my sophomore, junior year, I did it. Um, and they are something that without them, I don't I don't know where I would be. Um, they're great resources. Um, next thing is people are asking me about my MCAT. Um, I was supposed to take it earlier. I ended up pushing it back because I started the summer program at UCR School of Medicine and I had no money for, for any books or so forth. Um, and so I ended up pushing it back till um, I'm taking it in January 15, 20, uh, 2015, so it's, it's still the old MCAT. And I will give you guys my scores once I receive them. Um, next thing is I want you guys, uh, if you guys uh, follow me on Instagram, on Edgar's EDU, so E-D-G-A-R-S-E-D-U. Um, I'm on Instagram. If you follow me there, um, I could, you know, you know, we could, you know, make some sort of connection there. Um, you know, I usually don't follow back unless I know you're either from my YouTube channel or some pre-med student. Sometimes if your things on private, I don't, I can't see that you're pre-med. So, cause I have a lot of random people follow me. So, um, cause I'm, um, I'm not a private profile. So, uh, please make some sort of, you know, comment or something that you're from my channel and I will follow you back. Um, and I apologize if I don't follow you back. Sometimes, like I said, you're, if you're private, I don't know who you are and I don't want to follow random people. And also on Facebook, if you follow me on Facebook, um, it's great on Facebook because you can send audio recordings now. So sometimes I don't want to be on my phone texting, you know, all, you know, it takes me all day. So if you um, send me something on Facebook, I could send you a voice uh, recording answering, which is perfect for me. Um, and, you know, thank you guys for keeping me up on these videos. I mean, I constantly have people like James emailing me and so forth, these random people. 
at least they've become my, you know, kind of friends now on social media, uh, telling me, hey, you know, when's your next video? Um, and you guys, I feel obligated to put out videos, and and I want to thank you guys uh, for keeping me uh, up to this project that I'm doing, and I really do appreciate it um, as I progress in this whole undergrad situation um, and hopefully off to medical school, right? Um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know. Um, Thank you for listening. I truly appreciate it.